Welcome to Deep Mountain Security. Uh, today we're just going to quickly go over one of a uh, fun little tool here and you can find in Kali. You can also get it on Windows. It's called Burp Suite. And I just kind of want to quickly go over some of the different things that you can do using this utility. Now, first of all, we're going to open up Firefox as well because we're going to route um, Firefox through Burp Suite so that way we could use Burp Suite to modify our packets and uh, we can customize a little bit more of what exactly our packets are going to contain. So in order to do that we're going to have to go in here and you're going to want to go into your settings and you're going to want to go down to advanced and you're going to go over to network and click settings right here um, so we're going to have to put in a manual proxy configuration um, and Burp Suite will actually tell you what proxy configuration to use um, temporary projects fine we're just using the free edition here so we're just going to keep all our defaults and go ahead and start Burp Suite alrighty here we go so uh, what we're going to be using here is we're going to be using a proxy and so we can kind of change up some different settings right here but you can see our current proxy is on this interface right here so we're going to go ahead and set our Firefox proxy to use that 127001 port 8000 uh, make sure that's correct 8080 okay that's why I checked. Oops. Um, I guess we can go put the port over here and then we're gonna use this for everything else as well and we're gonna click OK. So now when I go out to something like for example google.com it's going to go through Burp Suite. Let's see here, switch between stuff. Um, so you notice we're currently intercept is on. So we got the request from the browser when I click forward. It's going to go out to Google, and then Google is going to respond back. And we're not currently respond. We're not currently receiving uh, data back from Google but I'm not worried about that. Google's kind of not a good site to go through right here. Um, so we're actually going to go uh, to another site where I can show you how to modify um, a couple different things. So really quickly here, um, one thing I want to do, um, I'm going to go to, so what I want to do is I want to show you, uh, demonstrate a couple, one basic feature of Burp Suite really quick. Um, so you're going to notice that this said my connection to Google wasn't secure and that's because it's going through my proxy and Google doesn't like it when I go through a proxy such as Burp. However, um, the web address I'm going to right now is kind of like a test server that somebody else set up. So you can see um, we're currently, this is the current request that my browser sent as soon as I type this into my address and it's coming up right here. So we're gonna go ahead and forward it on. And if we go back to our address, we'll see that it's requesting, uh, so this isn't HTTPS, this is HTTP. And it, even though if it was HTTPS, because we're using Burp as our proxy, we could still do a little bit. But um, for demonstration purposes, I think this is gonna be a little bit uh, better for our purposes here. Uh, so what it's asking for is a username and password. So we're gonna use a username of HTTP watch, like it says to right here in a different password. So I'm just gonna type in, um, this is the password and we're going to go ahead and hit OK and so that gets instantly sent through Burp and you're going to see that we've got a basic authorization right here uh, with these specific details and if we take so th this is base64 encoded the password is base64 encoded so I'm going to copy that and we're going to go back to Firefox um, actually that's not going to work uh, let me move over to here since that's in our um, since that machine happens to be in our uh, 
proxy, it's going to have to forward the request. So I just want to quickly show you that by going to a website such as base64decode.org, Um, and pasting that in here, we can go ahead and hit decode and you'll see that it's exactly what we typed in there. You've got, this is how uh, basic authorization works under HTTP. Uh, you've got base64 encoded password and you've got a username and then a colon and then uh, this is the password, which is the password. Um, so you can see that's exactly what we've got going on right here with Burp Suite. Now, if I wanted to change that, um, so let's not change it this time around. And so if we just forward on the traffic, um, you'll notice that it's showing right here that there's the password, right? Um, we can get rid of all those. Um, so let's go ahead and do it again. So I'm gonna hit the Enter key and it should, uh, if we go back to Burp, it's gonna ask us once again, uh, looks like we've got a cookie now with the password in it and same basic authorization and we can forward that on and once again it's going to ask us for a password um, so what we can do is we can let's, let's do, try something else this time um, so I'm going to use another password and we go to burp um, you can see we've got a new string right here which if I copy and then paste into our base64decode.org, um, you're gonna see that this is another password. So it's another thing because we're submitting a different request and different sites are gonna handle these things differently. However, let's go ahead, because this is the raw right here, so we can actually go to the parameters and we can go ahead and we can double click right here and we can actually add stuff onto it. Um, I prefer to do it from the raw just because it looks better. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to our Windows box. Let's actually go to an encoding and I'm going to go HTTP watch like it wants. And then we're going to go, um, this is some random stuff and we're going to encode that into base 64, copy that and we'll come back and we'll paste it right into where this data is right here. And then we're going to go ahead and click forward um, and we can forward all those as well. If we go back to Firework, Firefox, well, it didn't like it because of our cookie. So let's get rid of our cookie now and just um, reload this page real quick. Let's see if we can modify it this time. No, it's still the same. Maybe we're not copying out of here correctly. All right, so if we come over here and replace this with that, uh, let's get rid of our cookie, how's that sound? So like, I'm not even joking, you can modify all kinds of stuff in here. We could change our user agent to something else if we really wanted to. Uh, user agent, um, no browser is me uh, or something like that let me go ahead and click forward and if we go back you're gonna see now that here's our this is some random stuff and our cookie no longer exists because we deleted it when we sent our information back um, so that's probably my favorite thing about burp suite is you can intercept packets and then you can forward them on with different parameters um, and it's just, it's just a really fun utility to play around with. Uh, another thing you can do uh, when I send some, a request out, so if we send a request out again, uh, go back to Burp Suite. Um, so you're gonna see it's doing this request again. And what I, we can do here is we can go over to Options Nope. So what we can do here is we can go to action and we can go down to do intercept the response to this request. So when I go ahead and click forward, it's going to come back and you're going to see we've got our cookie in our path and then it looks like it's a bunch of randomly encoded or encrypted information here. 
However, we were still able to get uh, some information out of this site. Um, so you notice if we go back to Firefox, it hasn't reloaded yet. It's still waiting for um, the website to respond. So we go back here and we hit forward again, and you're gonna notice the website has responded. Firefox is no longer waiting. Um, and we can do this for all kinds of websites. Um, for example, uh, our website, deepmountainsecurity.com. Uh, we can go back and forward on our request. Uh, let's see here. So it's not quite done yet. Uh, let's actually go down to action and intercept our response again. Um, you're going to notice we've got a couple of uh, different pieces of information here. Uh, and we could actually modify this as it goes back to the browser to make the browser think that it's receiving something else. So we can actually, let's forward this one on. Um, so this is going to go ahead and load our site. Uh, I'm going to add an exception here so it'll load. So now it's going to wait for our site again. Um, let's go ahead and make sure it's intercepting the response. We can forward that on. And now look, here's the response. So you can see you now this is sending us all the HTML and there's a bunch of data here. So even though this is an HTTPS connection, because we're intercepting it, we can see everything right here because we're literally intercepting it. Um, so for example, we could do a couple of different things uh, like mm, we could perhaps modify some of this data. Uh, let's change this title here maybe to something like this title has been changed. Um, we could go ahead and maybe modify a couple of other things. Oh, I don't know. No, all this is metadata. That doesn't help me at all. And this is... Yeah, this is kind of a crazy way to... Uh, build a site, just FYI, not very easy to modify. Um, so we're just not going to worry about that. But we've changed one thing, so I'm going to go ahead and forward it back onto the browser. And that's not really anything. So when we come back here, you're going to notice um, it hasn't loaded all the pictures or anything quite yet. And that's probably because of the encrypted connection and us having to forward on everything from burp and whatnot but you'll notice that the title has been changed in the HTML and I don't believe it's running JavaScript which is probably why half the stuff on here isn't running um, but so you kind of get the idea you can modify a packet on its way to the server and you can modify the packet on its way back to a web browser so this is a useful tool for both crafting custom exploits of websites and custom um, headers if you're testing for specific vulnerabilities you can custom craft SQL attacks and whatnot uh, make sure you have authorization before you do anything like that though I do not condone illegal activity uh, so make sure you're only doing what you've been authorized to do or on your own setup in your home or apartment network uh, but not other people's networks if you don't own the network don't do anything on it unless you've been authorized um, um, but yeah, so this is a useful tool for playing around with, and it would also make for a good demonstration of a man-in-the-middle attack. If you want me to maybe demonstrate some more of that another day, uh, go ahead, let me know in the comments below. But uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching here at Deep Mountain Security.